I was a kid during the end of the Dust Bowl of the Texas Panhandle when everything was brown and dusty. And also during World War II, which came to an end in 1945 when I was seven years old. And uh, every spring a uh, Duncan professional demonstrator would show up and give a little show of very fancy tricks. I was uh, tremendously impressed by those guys. They were all, at that time, Filipino. And what they did with those yo-yos was true art. It was quite amazing to me. It was like magic. I became very inspired by them, and I immediately became pretty good at it and won some of the contests. Uh, what they gave as awards were badges, cloth badges. This one's from 1950. Um, this is probably 1947 or 48. And I've got a lot more. They were sewn onto a sweater completely covered with them. They did some fancy string tricks where the yo-yo tr would land on the string like a trapeze, and then they would do complications from that. And they, they was quite amazing with this yo-yo because to get 10 seconds spin was really something. You had to wax the string to get the maximum spin. The carving the old Filipino pros did was was done with this blade, uh, the, which is it's called the spay blade or the castrating blade. And it's uh, a style of carving that one or several of them developed. Uh, it depends on a thick and thin line by curving the blade. I'll start here with a couple of birds. I was uh, frustrated through the years because I won a lot of contests, but the contests then were strictly local and children. But I wanted to learn the fancy string tricks and there wasn't any way to learn them. Uh, many years later, when I was a professor, I was 29 years old, a Duncan uh, pro came to visit me. And we worked together trying to get the new yo-yos, which were like this, plastic with a metal axle, to spin as much as 30 seconds. We were really working to get a 30 second spin so we could do more advanced string tricks. And so from that point, I, uh, I got pretty good. So for a few years there in the 70s, the Duncan people would send their demonstrators to me to learn tricks. Uh, because they would hire people who really didn't know very much. And the biggest boom, ironically, was 1962, the year they started television advertising instead of just guys going to local stores. And uh, they did their best business, but they also went bankrupt <laughs> because of overexpansion. So they had to sell the company to a plastics company named Flambeau. So uh, Don Duckin and I became good friends. He uh, brought me things like this as a, uh, a prototype he brought, brought me before his company began. This is the only one in the world like this. I'll probably sell it to a collector one of these days. He came to Tulsa in the early 1970s, and he wanted me to do a book on advanced tricks, uh, which I never really did. <laughs> Actually, I did. I spent about a week doing uh, illustrations and explanation for a move that took uh, approximately one second, and it took a week, and I decided immediately that the only way to do it was to, for, to do it through film or something new that was coming along video. Meanwhile, there were technological advances. Uh, the most important one was uh, the change from the solid metal axle 
from the plastic yo-yo to uh, an invention by a dentist in San Francisco named Tom Kuhn, who's still making yo-yos. He's an enthusiast. And his invention was making a yo-yo that worked on a ball bearing. And this is the ball bearing. So uh, the whole problem with yo-yoing uh, and the way we were approaching it with advanced tricks was to make it sleep as long as possible so you have a long time to do tricks, but also return to your hand. So to make it return to your hand, we, uh, we invented various breaks, like a pad of tape here, which I started using in the early 70s. Ironically, <laughs> one of the owners of Promax after Don Duncan left threatened to sue me or because he patented the brake pad uh, 20 years after I used it. <laughs> So the next important thing was the change from uh, plastic to a combination of plastic and metal. Like this has metal rims, but the rest of it's plastic. And finally to solid aluminum yo-yos. Also, were, these were invented by Tom Kuhn, the dentist, and I have uh, the original one he made. The big technological change in, in recent years started happening around the year 2000, roughly. And that is, yo-yos had always been tug responsive. That is, uh, in a contest, you were required to make it return to your hand. And they were made so that you threw the yo-yo, it stayed at the bottom, it, you did tricks with it and then you tug and it came back to your hand. If it didn't, you, did, you were disqualified. But uh, a number of people on the West Coast had, uh, had started experimenting because every yo-yo person finds out that there's mistakes you make as you're playing. And that is the, you get the rotation of the yo-yo going against the will of the string and suddenly it snaps back at you. Uh, some clever young guys on the West Coast started developing that into a deliberate way to return the yo-yo. So what they did was they came up with a style called unresponsive. In other words, the yo-yos had always been responsive. Tug responsive, we called it. They tug them, they come back. They decided to not depend on that. So they started using what are called binds, which, is, which means making those what we used to call mistakes deliberately at the right time to make the yo-yo return and therefore got much longer sleep times and much more complex tricks. At the same time the internet came along and videos on the internet and instead of having to wait a year for a Filipino expert to come around, <laughs> suddenly the internet was full of tutorials and demonstrations of very complex advanced yo-yo. And the whole new style developed a new way to judging, judge contests. And unfortunately, contests in anything tend to change the thing itself. And the result is the modern contests look like a race. Kids are going frantic, all this very jerky, uh, rapid movement, and a uh, style called tech that looks sort of like doing the old, uh, what do you call the string tricks? Uh, Cat's, cradle. cat's cradle. Yeah, a lot of them look like cat's cradle, except more complex. And, uh, so, to, to, I don't really care for that style, and for that reason I haven't learned much of it, because the, the style I grew up with is very graceful, and so uh, I tend to kind of stick with that. As far as the future of it, 
I really don't know. There's uh, lots of branch movements where guys are going back to wood yo-yos and responsive yo-yos and so on. But mostly it's a giant movement of just incredibly skilled young people.